You'd have to freeze the whole atmosphere to keep that uh, sphere in place. You'd have to make, you'd have, this polonium would have to be decaying in a rock that is already solid. So the earth was never a hot molten mass. Get Robert Gentry's book if you want a lot more on that. But all over the granites all over the world contain these polonium halos. So it is stupid to say the earth was a hot molten mass. We have scientific evidence it was not. Here they tell the kids, though, the earth was hot with large pools of molten lava, and that is just stupid. It can't possibly be true. Then they tell them life got started about 3 billion years ago. See, according to the theory, 20 billion years ago there was a big bang. 4.6 billion years ago the earth cooled down, formed a hard rocky crust, and it rained on the rocks for millions of years and turned them into soup. And the soup came alive about 3 billion years ago. This is what the books teach. This fellow says, both the origin of life and the origin of major groups of animals remains unknown. How did life get started anyway? Well, this textbook tells the kids, oceans formed as it rained on the rocks for millions of years. Yes, boys and girls, millions of years of torrential rains created great oceans. And swirling in the waters of the oceans is a bubbling broth of complex chemicals. Progress from a complex chemical soup to a living organism is very slow. Well, I guess it is. It's totally stopped. Doesn't even happen. That's how slow it is. This one says, the first self-replicating systems must have emerged in this organic soup. Was your great, 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 grandpa soup? I think that's stupid, okay? Now, if they want to believe it, that's fine. I don't care what they believe, but don't call it science. What happened back in the 1950s? A guy named Miller and Urey wanted to know how the Earth and solar system had come to be. So they tell the kids, he took a mixture of Earth's primitive atmosphere. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. He never proved how life originated, but he did add evidence to the theory that life could have started by itself. Well, is that true? Now, did he really do that? Well, let's just study the facts here. This textbook tells the kids, many important events occurred during the Archean era, the most important of which was the evolution of life. Progress from complex molecules to even simplest living organism was a very long process. <laughs> long ago and far away. Fairy tale kids, coming up. First living cells emerged 4 billion to 3.8 billion years ago. I like that word emerge. They use it all the time. Like, just, like that explains how it happened, you know? <laughs> it just emerged. There is no record of the event, they tell the kids. Look, kid, we know what happened, and you're going to be tested on this, but there's no proof. Oh, okay. It's not science. First living self-replicating systems must have emerged in this soup. I don't think so. Here's what students are taught in school. This picture of the different uh, glass uh, tubes and flasks and pipes going around, they tell them this is how they made life in the laboratory. Hmm. He said he studied the chemical reactions of gases that existed in Earth's primitive atmosphere. Ooh, now this is important, okay? Notice up in the upper right-hand corner, he had methane, ammonia, water vapor, and hydrogen. No oxygen. He circulated these gases through these tubes through a spark, supposed to represent lightning. And sure enough, it produced a red goo at the bottom of the flask. 
and had some amino acids in it. Hmm. It didn't come close to getting life, though. Miller excluded oxygen in a reducing atmosphere because life could not evolve with oxygen. Anything that got together would oxidize. Cut a banana open, lay it on the table, it'll turn brown, it'll oxidize. Okay, so will an apple, so will anything alive. It'll oxidize. So that's why he didn't have any oxygen in the experiment. One of his gases was ammonia. Well, this creates a real serious problem because ammonia is destroyed by UV light. And UV light must be blocked by ozone, which is made from oxygen. Ah, I got a problem here. This textbook says several billion years ago, Earth's atmosphere had no free oxygen. Well, that's just simply not true. Ozone is made from oxygen and it blocks UV light, and ammonia, one of the gases needed for the experiment, is destroyed by UV light. So life cannot evolve without oxygen. But also life cannot evolve with oxygen. Well, I got a solution for that one. It didn't evolve. And by the way, the Earth has always had oxygen, even more than it does today, okay? Air bubbles are often found trapped in amber, like the movie Jurassic Park, you know, where they drilled in and got the mosquito blood. These air bubbles, though, have 50% more oxygen than we do right now. We cover more on that on my video series, videotape number two, about what the pre-flood world was like and why they lived to be 900 on the blue series of tapes out there on the table. But this textbook says, the mixture at the bottom of the flask was rich in amino acids. Oh, come on. That is stupid. It was not rich in amino acids. Let's tell the kids what they really found, okay? He filtered out the product. As this gas went through the tubes, he sparked it produced this goo at the bottom, and he drew the goo off, because if it went through again, it would be destroyed by the spark. Now, in real life, you're not going to get a section of the ocean protected. They say this just happened by chance in the ocean. We can't just, you can't filter out the product then. Secondly, what he made was 85% tar, 13% carboxylic acid, 2% amino acids. So 98% of his mixture was poisonous to life. I would not call that a success. And there are 20 different amino acids, sort of like 26 letters in the alphabet. There are 20 amino acids. Those amino acids go together to make proteins, like letters go together to make sentences. Mostly, he made just two of these amino acids. And they bond with the tar and the acid very quickly, more readily than with each other.
It was a failure as an experiment.